Greetings everyone. I thought I'd take this beautiful Sunday and just uh, spend a minute and talk about an amplifier that's been uh, for sale on eBay and Amazon and AliExpress and probably a whole bunch of other uh, discount uh, websites and you know if you type in a search for it all you'll get is those uh, websites like Thanks Buyer and stuff like that and there's really no reviews there's nothing ever said about it and you know we're going to kick this off in a way that I uh, really didn't want to see uh, yesterday <clears throat> I had an unfortunate incident where uh, I initiated an antenna tune cycle and uh, basically uh, blew the finals out of it. And for anybody who's never used a, a linear amplifier before on HF, uh, doing so will of course really mess up the SWR even for a short little bit. Now the problem was I was talking on it. And I was uh, making this amplifier work. Its uh, cooling fan was uh, on. The thing was already at its thermal limits, and it really didn't survive. And it died in a horrible way. Uh, the um, beautiful FET there uh, basically short-circuited, and that popped the fuse. It did a little bit more damage on the inside, and I spent three hours this morning and patched her all up with uh, some surplus parts. I. I had on hand. But uh, that wasn't the fault of the amplifier. So let's go back two weeks to when I actually got it. And uh, I brought it in here and I really, really didn't expect very much uh, for a 100 Canadian dollar linear amplifier. That's good for the 80 meter band uh, basically up to uh, 15 meters. And you know, hundred bucks and it fits beautifully with my uh, 150 dollar uh, USDX plus and my 120 dollar uh, antenna tuner it's uh, I call it the Chinese stack and you know um, if you're on a budget getting into ham radio and can't afford something like the Yesu behind me it's a great place to start and you know part of the fun of ham radio is trying to get things to work and experimenting Let's face it, if you drop your five, six, seven thousand dollars on really good name brand ICOM, Yesu, Kenwood, what have you, uh, equipment, and you turn it on and you know you start scrolling around, you're trying to find somebody to talk to and basically exchange a few signal reports and you're good and golden, well, you're not going to be in the hobby for too long. You're probably just going to go, well, that's not fun. So, we have to remember what ham radio is all about, and that's the building, experimenting, blowing things up, and then fixing them aspect. And so, this El Cheapo stuff can actually really be fun. But let's get back to the amplifier. It's the OGS-50W, and written on it says HF Power Amplify. -E. Yeah, seriously, it's so cheap, it's missing the R after amplifier, but whatever. Some things in translation, you know, just don't carry forward, and that's just a silk screen on the front. What's really cool about it, though, is they have what appears to be um, some sort of a fat rat wearing a tuxedo. So I've nicknamed this thing my Fat Rat 50, and why not? It's kind of cute. It's a, a nice touch. Definitely fits in with modern humor, anime, and blah, whatever. But anyway, so does it work? Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, the output power from my USDX Plus is at best 5 watts. It's usually around 4.6. Um, and that's all you're going to get out of it. So you kind of need something if you're wanting to partake in some rag chew nets that cover, you know, most of uh, your province and maybe a little bit into the states and whatever. Five watts, perfect day, all right, you can do it. But, you know, if you want to rag chew pretty much every evening or whatever, you need a little bit more power. And it seems that 50 watts is, you know, a decent amount to start with. And for the 100 bucks, you can't go wrong. Now, 
I haven't done any spectral purity testing on it. I've got a good idea that it's probably not the cleanest thing on the uh, planet and this station will eventually get uh, some low pass filters and stuff like that just to try to clean things up because you know it's the right thing to do. We're custodians of our handbands and if we start making a mess then you know the government might say hey no you guys aren't going to get another band or we're going to make your band smaller or what have you. So can't really speak to that aspect of it but yeah I blew it up I fixed it it runs off the uh, shelf parts a really cool part here is that the uh, um, finals in it are the IRF 530s and if you're into looking and fixing and building things you're probably going to realize that even in Canadian dollars that's a dollar item after tax so repairability functionality it's all there. Um, the insides of it, it's uh, got some uh, surface mount devices, but a lot of uh, the items are on top of the board. It seems to be a single sided board, and that side of the board, when you take the cover off, is looking you straight in the eye. So if you need to fix something, you probably can. Um, as far as its creator, uh, I'm trying to remember here. I think it says something about uh, uh, DG or DB7OGS. It's a Chinese call sign. I did uh, try to uh, look it up and all that, and I have not had any luck tracking down the call sign that's silk screened on its circuit board. But um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's probably one of the first times we're seeing something that hasn't been a knockoff of. Uh, somebody else's work comes straight out of China for the ham radio market which is kind of cool maybe they're uh, maybe they're starting to uh, figure things out and maybe we'll see some more entry-level budget just have fun with it equipment coming that uh, isn't a knockoff of hard work of uh, other people so but um, yeah there it is in a nutshell I like it it's hundred bucks even if you break it you can fix it isn't that what ham radio is all about? Till next time. And thanks for watching this episode of Tom's Workshop.